cataractcoach.com, the secrets to Iowa calculations and high myopia. Let me tell you the secrets from doing more than a thousand of these cases in my own private clinic. Now, I'm going to show you this video here, a complete cataract case of a highly myopic patient having cataracts started with me. Let me tell you about cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. It is your source for cataract, glaucoma, cornea, and refractive. Everything into your segment. Remember, it's more than just cataracts. And we're going to launch our retin channel coming up in 2025, and that's going to be all the posterior segment. We're going to have everything covered just for you. Now, let's talk about these secrets. Number one, do not aim for absolute plano or emetropia. I know you think the patient wants to be perfect plano. This patient's been, let's say, minus 10 or minus 12 or minus 15 diopters of myopia for the entirety of life. And now the patient says, no, no, I want perfect 20-20 distance vision. No, the patient doesn't understand. Because remember, you can't aim for this because if that's the center of your bell curve, if you aim for plano, half the patients will be slightly above plano, half will be slightly below, right? But the bell curve distribution in a highly myopic like this is a very wide curve. It's not a very tight curve. And as a result, what does that mean? That means that there's going to be too much of a risk of hyperopia. And these patients will not be happy. If you go from minus 12 to plus 0.5, you will be miserable. But if you go from minus 12 to minus 0.5, you'll be thrilled. So you have to never aim for emetropia. Just trust me on this. Patients who are very myopic have myopia on the brain, and they like to have a little bit of residual myopia. It's a good thing. You know what? Me included. Number two, you got to remind the patients about the loss of extreme near vision. So here's a, oh, that's a beautiful looking rexus, by the way. Look at that. Measured five millimeters exactly. That's going to be helpful at the end. I'll tell you why. That's the bonus. Now, if the patient is minus 10, this patient without glasses sees at one-tenth of a meter or 10 centimeters which is great, really close vision, just a couple inches from the face or 10 centimeters away, but that little magic trick is going to go away. The patient can't take off your surgery the way they take off their glasses, so you have to remind them about that. Number three, residual myopia is a blessing. I told you, minus 0 0.5 is great. Zero plus 0 0.5 is not. And number four, aiming from minus 1 to minus 2 can be amazing. These are patients where if you leave them, let's say, minus one or minus one and a half, they may have actually pretty good distance vision in the daytime. And they still have fantastic functional like computer range vision and even some near vision. That's really a fantastic goal for these patients. Number five, understand that these patients may get a meniscus design lens. What does that mean? Well, if you notice, most of your single piece acrylic lenses only go down to like a power of five or six diopters. Why don't they go down lower? Well, these biconvex designs actually can't support that. You need to change the lens design to a meniscus design. Again, I have a video on Cataract Coach explaining all about that. You should go to cataractcoach.com, look up the word meniscus in the Cataract Coach search engine, not just YouTube, my friend. You, otherwise, you'll miss out. And you can learn all about it here. So use a calculator, whether it's online or whatever you have in your machines, that's going to support calculations for a meniscus lens, which are a little bit different here. And remember, they may have a very different A constant as well. So in this case, this patient's getting a three-piece IOL, a monofocal, which is a meniscus design. And then again, the bonus it says there is the capsule is important even though ELP is not an issue. What does that mean? ELP is the effective lens position. Where in the eye does the eye well sit? Now, an average patient, you put a 20 diopter lens in, yes, actually, if the lens sits a little bit more anterior, the patient may have a little bit of a myopic surprise. If the lens sits a little bit more posterior, they may have a hyperopic surprise, right? It's why I tell you to add a half diopter to the eye power if the patient had a prior vitrectomy. Because that lens may sit a little deeper in the eye than you think. A little bit more posterior effective lens position. So, in this case, though, think about it. What if the eye power in this eye is zero? And by the way, if it is zero, do not leave them a fake ink. Still put in a zero diopter eye well. If the owl power is zero, does it matter if the lens comes forward or back? No, because it's a zero power lens. There's no change in the power, despite a change in effective lens position. So, same thing applies for a two diopter lens. Believe me, two is close enough to zero. So, in these cases, you want the good overlap by the rexus, because obviously you take pride in your work, you want it to be beautiful. But it's going to help hold the lens in good position, and you may... If you don't measure it out, make too large of a rexus. Now, here comes the IOL. Three-piece lens going to go inside the eye here. I wish I'd put the eye back in primary. There we go. Get that eye back in primary. Now, okay to leave the lens open up here on top of the eyes and then dial it into position here. 
Seven L rule. So as you know, the haptics look like the anti S, and that looks great. Let's get those dialed in the capsule bag. You may also need more viscoelastic, more of your cohesive viscoelastic to fill the bag. More these eyes, eyes are big. It's a big anterior chamber. It's a big bag. And so now we get the lens and look at that. Look at that rexus overlap. If you don't measure the rexus and you have this huge eye with a 13 millimeter white to white and a very large capsule bag diameter and a good huge dilation, you may make too big of a rexus. That's why I measure it out. And you'll see here at the end, you know it's going to overlap beautifully. So get that lens in position here. Look at that 360 overlap. That is a good looking rexus. And I take pride in this. Now, when you see this patient post-op a year or five or ten years later, you'll say, wow, look at that. Beautiful rexus. Lens in great position. Beautiful incision. Again, your rexus and your incision, those are your signature. And you want to do a beautiful job. So in this patient, we put in a very low-power lens. I can't remember the exact power. I think it was slightly myopic, even a minus two, minus three diopter lens. And we aim to make this patient about minus 1.5 after surgery patient was absolutely thrilled. This is my new secret series. So I'm going to do this from now on. Uh, once every so often, I have a video about all the little secrets and pearls that I've learned over the years. And I'm going to teach them all to you. You know, the cataract coach teaches you all the secrets, the stuff that even your professors didn't teach you back in residency or, or in fellowship. I'm going to teach it all. And we're going to all learn together and have a fantastic time. Hey, remember, check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. There's so much more great material that you are missing out on. Check it out. Remember, it's our source for the cataract, glaucoma, cornea, and refractive.